Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a deck built around Happily Ever After, the alternate to win condition enchantment from Throne of Eldrain. So when Happily Ever After enters the battlefield, each player gains 5 life and draws a card. And then at the beginning of our upkeep, if there are 5 color among permanents we control, 6 or more card types among permanents we control and or cards in our graveyard, and our life total is greater than or equal to our starting life total, we win the game. So those are a lot of conditions that need to be met, some of them of course easier than others, getting the different card types is not too difficult, having the life total can be a little bit trickier against some more aggressive decks, but we do have a lot of life gain and of course the enchantment itself also gains 5 life. The trickiest one is getting the 5 different colored permanents in play, but a nice one to help with that is Plain White Celebration, a 7 mana sorcery that lets us choose between 4 modes and we can even choose the same mode more than once between making a 2-2 citizen creature token that's all colors, meaning that it does count as all 5 colors for Happily Ever After, so just having a single 5 color citizen token in play is good enough for Happily Ever After. We can also return permanence from our graveyard to our hand, we can proliferate, which is very powerful especially combined with Nissa who shakes the world and we can also gain 4 life so that's another way of gaining life to get up to 20 for happily ever after so plain white celebration is a perfect fit in this deck and then to round out the deck we've got a lot of the kind of traditional cards you might see in a banned ramp deck so we've got a lot of mana creatures here with the gilded goose and paradise druid helping us ramp out all these different expensive cards and uh, Nissa who shakes the world is our main combo with plain white celebration as well we can potentially ramp out Nissa pretty early and plus one to get up to six and then if we get to untap with a six loyalty Nissa and cast plain white celebration we can proliferate three times minus eight Nissa and still have a Nissa at one loyalty in play and then of course if we get to ultimate we get to search a ton of forests out of our library our lands become indestructible and then we can keep plusing Nissa to make indestructible 3-3s three which can uh, potentially win the game as well and then something else about building around happily ever after is getting those different card types in play or in the graveyard now of course lands aren't too difficult to get in play then happily ever after is an enchantment itself then creatures and planeswalkers are pretty easy thanks to our mana dorks and uh, the various planeswalkers in the deck plain white celebration is a sorcery so then we're already up to five but then we still need either an instant or an artifact in the graveyard and that's where the two copies of opt come in handy just as a cheap cantrip replaces itself and counts as an instance for happily ever after and then we also have two copies of glass casket which is an artifact that also doubles up as a removal spell exiling an opposing creature with convert mana cost three or less so that also makes it easy to get up to the six different card types for Happily Ever After. Then we also have two copies of Fae of Wishes, can be a one for flying blocker against aggressive decks, but for the most part we're interested in the Granted Adventure, letting us search a non-creature card out of our sideboard, reveal it and put it into our hand, so we can search up a fourth copy of Happily Ever After or a fourth copy of Plain White Celebration, and we've got some other nice tools that we can search up, we'll take a look at the sideboard in just a second. We also have two copies of Bond of Flourishing as a bit of additional life gain for Happily Ever After, it's also sorcery, and can help us find the three mana enchantment as well as the many planeswalkers in the deck so adds a bit of consistency we've got some powerful three mana planeswalkers the fairy time raveler can give us a bit of interaction as well as the plus one being quite useful alongside plain white celebration being able to cast plain white celebration in the opponent's end step makes it a lot more difficult for the opponent to interact with the 2-2 citizen token so we can win with our happily ever after we also have two copies of Oko, which can make more food to fuel Gilded Goose. The food tokens can also gain us life to get up to 20 life for Happily Ever After, and then can also turn problematic creatures into 3-3 Elks. And we also can't forget about food tokens counting as artifacts for Happily Ever After, so both Gilded Goose and Oko also help us in that regard. Then Time Yop Collector of Tales is also great in this deck, especially with Happily Ever After requiring those six card types. Time Yop can put a lot of cards in our graveyard with the plus one ability, as well as helping us find key cards like Nissa, Happily Ever After, and Plain White Celebration. 
and then the Minus can also return all sorts of cards from our graveyard back to our hand. And then we have our four Nissas to provide a ton of ramp, and a nice one to ultimate with plain white celebration. We've got some sweepers, two copies of Time Wipe, as well as one copy of a Realm Cloak Giant. So the reason we're playing this split is that Realm Cloak Giant we can potentially find with Bond of Flourishing, and it is also a card we can search up with one of our sideboard cards, Shared Summons, which we can potentially search up with the Fae of Wishes, and uh, that way we get to search up two creatures from our main deck, and one of those could be a Realm Cloak Giant, which can also double up as a sweeper. And uh, of course it is also a 7-7 that can potentially win the game if the Happily Ever After plan doesn't come together. And then two copies of Time Wipe, which uh, kills all creatures, a bit of a nombo with our mana creatures, but we do get to save one of them, so we can maybe pick up a Gilded Goose again to make more food. And then our three copies of Plain White Celebration, which is the big finisher in the deck. And then our mana base, we've got one Plains, one Island, four Forests. Of course, do want a lot of Forests for Nyssa, and we can search those basics up with two copies of Fabled Passage. Also have one on the sideboard that we can search up with uh, Fae of Wishes if we just need a land. And then a lot of dual lands for Hallowed Fountains, for Temple Gardens, for Breeding Pools, and for Temple of Mystery, letting us scry one. And then taking a quick peek at the sideboard, cards we can search up with Fae of Wishes. We've got a Root Snare that can potentially buy time against opposing creature decks. Doesn't work against Questing Beast, so we do have to be careful there. But being able to minus 3 Tamiya to get it back can uh, buy us a lot of extra time to set up our win condition. We've got a Sorcerer's Spyglass to shut down opposing activated abilities, mostly for Planeswalkers. We've got an additional copy of Happily Ever After, in case we didn't find another one. We've got a Prison Realm as Exile Base Removal. Pulse of Marasa can gain life and return a creature from our graveyard back to our hand. We've got an extra Tamiyo Collector of Tales to recycle cards from the graveyard. Shared Summons, as we pointed out, can search up a Realm Cloak Giant, or maybe an additional copy of Fae of Wishes. Time Wipe as an extra sweeper. Planar Cleansing as a sweeper that can clean up all non-land permanents. We've got the fourth Plain White Celebration, which is probably the card we search up most often. And we also have each one of the finales. The white one can make a lot of tokens and can act as an extra win condition if we have a lot of mana with Nyssa and maybe the Nyssa Ultimate thanks to Plain White Celebration. Finale of Revelation can draw a ton of cards, can also come in handy against opposing mill decks, being able to shuffle our graveyard back into our library. Finale of Devastation can end the game on the spot and then we also have a mass manipulation to steal a bunch of the opponent's creatures and or planeswalkers, and a fabled passage if we just need to search up a land that can fix for all three colors. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, hand seems reasonable, we've got a bit of ramp with a Gilded Goose, couple opts to find some early action, and eventually plain white celebration. Right, opponent fetches Mountain. I think I'll opt main phase in case I draw another goose. Temple Garden is not terrible since I do need to hit my land drops to get up to Nyssa. So I think I'll keep it. And then pass a turn. Not gonna use the goose to opt unless my opponent kills the goose, then I'll think about it. Which is often, so Rakdos Sacrifice is what my opponent's playing. And a Knight of a Legion. Alright, let's just untap. Temple Mystery we can play now. And Forests, I think I can bottom now. It is a painless land, which is nice. But uh, don't want to flood out in case Nissa dies. And then end of turn I can either opt or make a food. I already have my plays for the next couple turns lined up. Hopefully Nissa into Plain White Celebration. So I don't really need to opt here. Alright, Priest of Forgotten Gods is scary. And another Witch's Oven. Let's make a food. And hopefully Nissa gets to stick around. Yeah, 
And then I think I'll untap the Temple of Mystery. I don't want to untap a forest since those are quite valuable for Nyssa. But this way I can attack and still cast my opts end of turn. And it doesn't actually count as a forest for Nyssa purposes. Don't want to put uh, our white mana in harm's way. So this seems fine. And then it's all about trying to preserve as much loyalty on Nyssa as possible, so we can potentially ultimate with plain wide. Ooh, claim the firstborn. Let's make sure to tap our temple first. And then I guess I'll opt. And the backup Nyssa, is that going to be necessary? So the claim the firstborn does untap my temple. So they can hit Nyssa down to one. I think backup Nyssa might be necessary here. And we'll see whether the opponent wants to use a priest or if they want to use an oven. They could have pumped a Knight of a Legion using the Temple of Mystery for mana. So they're okay with a Nissa too. And they're gonna play Crafter instead. I guess I'll save Nissa still. Just gives me so much more mana for next turn. So yeah, Plain White Celebration I can cast, but I wouldn't be able to necessarily um, ultimate Nissa this turn. I'm not gonna have enough mana to play a backup Nissa and ultimate that one with a Plain White. I guess I'm just gonna make a bunch of citizens in that case. And get in there with our Hallowed Fountain. This way we're a bit protected from the Priest of Forgotten Gods. And I can maybe... Try and get up to ultimate the old-fashioned way. Although Mayhem Devil is pretty scary to see on the other side. As that can start mowing down my citizens as well. Alright, they're just gonna damage Nyssa, sacrifice a citizen, and one more damage finishes off Nyssa. But we do have a backup. Not a Witch's Oven. Well, as long as we can dodge a Cauldron's Familiar, we're okay. But uh, once they do find one with Triple Oven, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Ooh, Glass Casket is perfect, can answer the Mayhem Devil. Untap a Temple Garden. And cast a Casket now. And then the Citizens can maybe attack. So they get to sank the Devil to the Witch's Oven. And yeah, I think I'm just attacking. Would prefer to win with Happily Ever After, but every now and then we gotta switch game plan. Angra's Rampage makes me sacrifice Nissa, but my point is at 8. And we've got a pretty decent board presence. Another plain white celebration I can't currently cast, one mana short. Opponent up to 11 thanks to the food token, but has to chum block with the priest, so not where they want to be. They can at least get another food out of it. And we'll pass a turn. And yeah, that does it, so just a classic citizen beatdown to win the game. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Hopefully the goose survives, since we'll need it to ramp out these planeswalkers. And we've got a bunch of options next turn. Opponent on black whites and worthy knights. Don't mind bouncing it with the ferry, and then next turn I can glass casket it. Right ah, we've got multiple glass caskets. So let's scry here. Fay of Wishes seems fine. Can even wish at instant speed thanks to the ferry. Trust me, I have a plan. Order of Midnight, just as a 2 2 flyer, that's fine. So, I don't mind just going for the Fae of Wishes here. Don't have a Nissa in the sideboard I can search up, since I want it for in the main deck. Acclaimed Contender with a Knight in play. Not much I can do about that. Finds a Blacklands Paragon. So the ferry takes two. Not gonna chump. I won't let you win. So what do I search up? Is it just happily ever after? Could also get a Tamyo. Or a sweeper. I think I just like getting the enchantment here. Let's try this. I could happily ever after plus fail of wishes. With the Ferry in play, they can't play this at instant speed, so they can't, like, ambush my Fae of Wishes. But it could, of course, play the main phase and still get an attack in. I think we'll play this, see what we can find, and take it from there. Alright, Paradise Druid is fine too. Really want to keep the Glass Casket for another, like, Worthy Knight that could get out of hand. So let's just play the Paradise Druid for now. And then I'm okay if the ferry dies. We're just trying to buy a bit of time. Develop our mana. We're still at a healthy life total. Midnight Reaper's a nice one though. Prime target for the Glass Caskets. And opponent's gonna have to main phase a Paragon. Giving Contender... Death Touch and Life Link. Set the ferry down, I'll take three. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. So now I think I'll glass casket the Reaper. I can use the goose to make food, and I can turn the food into an elk to have a 3-3 three, three blocker. That seems reasonable. Could also turn one of these glass caskets into elks, but then if the casket dies, my opponent's gonna get the creature back. Which seems a bit risky. So let's try this instead. Walk with me, sing with me. I will enlighten you. Your new look is enchanting. Oko's gonna eat a murder strider, that's fine. Opponent could have still killed Oko just by attacking with everyone. But this works for me as well. And then they're offering the trade after playing an extra Reaper. I think the goal here is to try and find one of our five mana sweepers. I can bounce the Reaper and then sweep so I don't make my opponent draw a bunch of cards. So I'll just take the damage for now. Plain White Celebration's pretty good, can get back all sorts of Planeswalkers from the graveyard as well. Let's see, how are we doing on the Happily Ever After? I'm missing a card type, but I think Sorcery will make it so we have enough. 
then I can make a citizen, and then it's my life total that's the major concern. But uh, the plain white can only gain me so much life. If I make a citizen and gain 12, I guess it would be up to 20. So we're getting close to where we can win with the plain white. Maybe this turn I sh should just kind of do some board control. Bounce the Reaper, play the Fae of Wishes. And make a food. Yeah, let's play the Fae. And pass the turn. Murder Cider kills the fairy, that's fine. Really should have seen that Replays a Reaper. And now I think I'm okay with the trade. Make a food. I don't think I can afford to make two citizens, since I want to be able to gain 12. Since gaining three with the goose is not enough, and I can't make food and sack both foods to gain six. Could also return some of these planeswalkers, which would be pretty decent as well. But if my opponent doesn't have removal, then going for the gain 12, make one citizen would let me win the game. But if they have interaction, then it doesn't necessarily work out. I think I'm still going to go for it here. So we'll gain for three times and make a citizen. And if we check on the Happily Ever After, all conditions are met. So I just need to make sure I can stay at 20. I can gain another three by sacking the food. No, they have another Murder Strider to kill my citizen. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So we went with the high variance uh, line here, trying to win. But they had... Yet another murder strider. And now uh, it's going to be difficult to make another citizen. Of course, I can bounce back the Fae of Wishes and get something out of the sideboard. That's going to be useful. This attack kind of indicates maybe another Blacklands Paragon. Otherwise, the uh, 3 1 probably wouldn't be attacking. So I guess I don't want to block with the Fae since I need to bounce it back now that I don't have anything else going on. I guess I'm fine trading here. And then. Just taking a bit of damage. Or am I? No, I think I'm still gonna block. They might make this attack anyway, just to draw some cards with the Reaper. So no Paragon. I think I forgot to make a food with the Goose before damage there. Yeah, I could have tapped the Paradise Root for mana, make an extra food. Double Corpse Knights. It's gonna drain me for a bunch. Uh, let's see what we can bond into. Another Happily Ever After. Oko sadly can't take the plane wide. I think I'll take the enchantment here. Time wipes, pretty decent. Suppose I should get my attack in first. So yeah, I should have had an extra food token in play, but I do get to pick up my Fae of Wishes. And then Fae of Wishes can find an extra plain white celebration. Order gets back Corpse Knights. Contender. Finds, ooh, the Circle of Loyalty. Nice Anthem effects. And a Swordmaster to drain me. Alright, let's Fae of Wishes. And I think Plain White Celebration is what I'm getting. 
Suppose I could also get Tamyo, which can get back Plain White Celebration, but then I can't play my Fave of Wishes as a blocker. And I'll end up taking a bit more damage. Yeah, let's get the Plain White. And then play Temple. Finds Realm Cloak, that seems good. Play Fave of Wishes. And we're getting pretty close to setting up uh, the win here. Circle of Loyalty. Another Swordmaster revealed down to 14. So I'm taking a lot of damage. Probably should have chum blocked the contender since I'm probably forced to a realm cloaked here anyway. So I could have saved myself one more point of damage. I guess now I'll get in for one. Say go. Poon does get to repopulate the board here with all these murderous riders. I get to play Realm Cloaked as a pretty big blocker. Or I can Tamyo get back a sweeper. That seems better. Let us have a story worth retelling. Get the time wipe. Alright, opponent is down to just a circle of loyalty and a murder strider, but those can start generating a lot of tokens as well. They've got double Castle Ardenvale, which we also can't overlook, and Castle Lockthwain to draw more cards. So they definitely still have a lot going on. Extra fave wishes. Alright, let's plus Tamiya naming Nissa. Did not find one. So I could fail of Wishes for another Sweeper, but I could try and go for the win once again, just by plain white, gain 12, make a Citizen, play fail of Wishes as a blocker. Would that be enough? Let's see, I can block, take 3, I guess I would be at 19, which is not quite enough. So I think I might be better off wishing for a Sweeper here then. I also get another Tamiyo activation. So yeah, let's go for the time wipe. Bonus cries, keeps the guard on top and draws it with the castle. And are they gonna activate the circle? Looks like that's the plan. Alright, so what can time you get back? Don't have any Nissas in the graveyard. Could always get back an extra plane wide as well. Think I'm still gonna plus naming Nissa, since that could give me a lot of extra mana. Let me aid your still nothing. Start with the opt, I think. Five, six, seven. Yeah. Should not have tapped my breeding pool, should have tapped the Temple of Mystery. Alright, there's Nissa. So, let's make sure to tap the temples now. Play Nissa. And then I could ultimate Nissa, thanks to the plain white celebration, but I think we're gonna go for the win with Happily Ever After. So let's make a citizen and gain 12. And I get to untap a land here as well. We'll untap one we don't care about too much. Alright. Let's see if they can uh, deal a bit of damage. Paragon. And they can use a circle. So now I guess they can put me below 20 once again. Yeah, if I remember to make that food token, or if I had gained the one extra life 
by chum blocking with the Fae of Wishes, I would have been at 20 here after taking 3, or I could have gained life. So those two small missteps earlier in the game could end up costing me here. Nah, I guess we'll trade. Keep the citizen. And 19. But we're still in pretty fine shape here with our two planeswalkers. Bond of Flourishing as well. So hopefully next turn is the turn where we can actually win. So how about I minus get another plane wide. No and uh, I could go for the Nissa ultimate. Don't think that's necessary. Just gonna make a couple extra citizens to be safe. Eight life seems fine. Let's bond as well. Find a back of Nyssa. And let's just uh, play the Fail Wishes. Untap land. And say go. And hopefully this is enough. We're at 30 life, plenty of blockers, and if we check out the Happily Ever After checklist, we've got everything completed. So it's just a matter of untapping at this point. Order of Midnight looking at the graveyard, can they get back anything of relevance? Smitten Swordmaster to drain me, but that's not enough. They go for the Corpse Knights. Place Order. That's uh, not quite enough damage. And my opponent concedes. All right, we got there. Did not miss out on the Happily Ever After animation. We would just go to our upkeep and then my opponent would explode. So yeah, there we go. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn on Goose. Turn to Casket or Bond. Into hopefully a Nissa at some point. Facing an adventure deck with a turn on Innkeeper. So they're off to their preferred start. Luckily, I have the Glass Casket as an answer. So it's a green-white adventure deck, so that's a more aggressive adventure deck. So finding our sweepers is going to be key. Opponents uh, probably keeping up a Shepherd here is my guess. So if I go to Casket Innkeeper, they can save it, which is not ideal. Alternatively, I can just cast a Bond of Flourishing here. I think I'm just going to cast a bond here. And then probably want the uh, basic forests. And say go. Ah, Pwn just with a once upon a time. That makes sense as well. Finds a fairy guide mother. Temple Garden untapped. And yeah, my opponent's gonna get to draw quite a few cards. Intruder draw card. And a flower to get a land. Alright, so at least now I get to casket innkeeper. But uh, also need to be careful because the intruder plus another guide mother can kill my caskets. Unless I want to chum block with a goose, which I don't really want to. So it's a tricky spot. Could take two to cast up there. I think I'd rather play that tapped for now. Attacks with both. Block the intruder. Point passes a turn. I'll untap. And yeah, I think it's Nissa time. And then I can untap Breeding Pool, play Fae of Wishes as a one for blocker. Point with a raise the alarm to make some tokens. Be wary of the ground you walk on. 
or I could just pass a turn with Breeding Pool as my only blocker, but then Guide Mother on Intruder could be pretty scary. I think I'm just casting the Fail Wishes here. And I don't want to attack in case I have another Racy Alarm to ambush my Breeding Pool. Ooh, Questing Beasts. Not a card you always see in these uh, green-white adventure decks, but very good here. As that can take out my Nyssa. So, no matter what here, Nyssa dies. I guess, let's see, this is only when it deals damage to players, so I might as well take out a Soldier token. Nissa down, and I'm gonna need a sweeper here to clean up this board. Otherwise, Questing Beast is gonna terrorize all my future planeswalkers. And they could still have a shepherd in hand to save the beasts at any point. So there's that problem too. I could time you get back Nissa, but that doesn't get me anywhere since I need to untap with Nissa before I can celebration. And that's never gonna happen with the beast in play. So I think the plan here is to just. Opt and go digging. Not a goose doesn't help. Alright, time wipe. That's what I need. Now I don't have double whites until I make a food with a goose. So that's going to be the plan here. Beast gets in for four. Opponent could be setting up a March of the Multitudes as well in a turn. And we'll just untap. Alright, so I've got a bunch of options. With a Time Wipe, I probably just want to pick up the Fae of Wishes. Could also pick up my land. But um, picking up Fae of Wishes makes sense. Could also go for the Gilded Goose and replay it right away, which gives me mana to maybe cast Celebration. Could attack first with the Fail of Wishes. It's probably worth it. Alright, so everything dies. Pwn can still march for three. And repopulate the board. Alright, so we're not in a great spot here. That questing beast definitely did a number on us. And there's another one. Yeah. So I pretty much need to top deck another sweeper here. Casket doesn't quite do it. One key decision this game was whether or not to casket the innkeeper. When we had the chance, we played around Shepherd. So that was definitely a key turning point, since my opponent did get to draw a few cards of the innkeeper on the following turn. But, uh, yeah, I think this game's over. Just double-checking if there's anything we can do. Can, uh, Fave Wishes and have another look. Can get a land, cast my caskets, and still be dead. Alright, GG's. And a flourish as well to end the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands a little bit awkward not having green mana, but I do have an opt to go digging. We've got plenty of green sources in the deck, so we'll try it. And we're on a draw, so there's a chance we draw a green source on turn one. Opponent with a once upon a time, maybe looking for a Gilded Goose. Finds Order of Midnight instead, so this is a green-black adventure deck. All 
All right, let's just play this on tap to say go, and then opt, hoping to find some green mana. A lucky Clover, all right, so it is the Clover version of the adventure deck, so... Could see some scary things next turn, as much as I want Happily Ever After. We need green mana more. All right, I guess uh, that's the start. I'll keep the breeding pool. So we're off to a bit of a slow start, not being able to play Goose or Paradise Road earlier. All right, nothing from the opponent so far. Guess we'll just play our two mana dorks. So on the bright side, the presence of Lucky Clover might mean that they don't have cards like Questing Beast that are very good against our Planeswalkers. But they could potentially go over the top, thanks to Beanstalk Giant ramping them with the Lucky Clover. And of course they're gonna have Murderous Rider, which can destroy my Planeswalkers. Opponent's still not doing anything, maybe missing a land drop. So I could Tamio, although it's somewhat likely to die to a Murderous Rider alongside the Gilded Goose. So it's better if I can Tamio and then Minus to get some value, so I could get an Opt back. Although that's pretty low impact. I think I will minus. You would make an excellent informant for my study. Get the guaranteed card instead of hoping to find a Nissa in four looks. I'm not gonna attack with the Paradise Roots. And we might see a Murder Strider here. Alright, instead I'd say Falmar Knight drawing two. And there's Innkeeper, all right. Now the cards can start flowing. Falmar Knight draw a card. Another Falmar Knight. And Incubation, that's a new one. Kind of like uh, Once Upon a Time. Can look for some creatures. Finds a murderous rider. All right. So now we know for sure that they have one. Bottom the breeding pool this time around. All right. There's my happily ever after. So let's plus naming Nissa. To the library. So I can cast my plain white celebration here. And I probably want to make quite a few citizens. How am I doing on the card types? I've got all the card types I need. The food also helps being an artifact for uh, Happily Ever After, but we also have a casket in the graveyard. Yeah, I think this turn I'm just going to cast Celebration. While the mana dorks are still alive. And I could get stuff back from the graveyard as well like the casket to answer the innkeeper, but I might be able to set up the win over the course of two turns here with Happily Ever After. I just need to make sure I make enough citizens because they can kill multiples with the Murderous Rider. So how about I make three citizens and gain four, and then the five life from Happily Ever After could be enough. And then I still have an extra celebration in case uh, they do manage to deal with all the citizens. Alright, opponent's just gonna unload some cheap creatures. Swordmaster, oof, that's gonna hurt. Double drain with a lot of knights in place and now I'm down to 10. And all of a sudden uh, it's gonna be difficult to be at 20. Plays a sword master, draws a card. And the knight grows. So what can Tamiya get back? Glass caskets for the innkeeper. 
Can't get back a plain white celebration. Maybe that's the play. Or I can plus naming Nissa, which would be quite good too. I think I'll just start by casting Happily Ever After. See what he gets, and then decide afterwards. Uh, let's just get a casket for the Sinkeeper. And then I can uh, take two in order to make a food. Second Lucky Clover means that the Murder Strider can kill all three of my citizens. Or if they have a second Swordmaster, they can just kill me on the spot. Alright, GG's. So yeah, it's not easy to win with Happily Ever After, but whenever you can pull it off, it's quite satisfying. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.